moving on to another FDA approval in the last uh, year or so, and that is liposomal donorubes and cytarabine, uh, which was approved in August of 2017 for previously untreated adults with either AML with myelodysplasia-related changes, a prior uh, MDS, for example, or a complex karyotype, multilineage dysplasia, and treatment-related AML. Uh, so that drug has now been available for a year. Now, again, our audience is probably saying, oh, wait, you just went back to chemo. But this is not just the same old donorubin cytarabine. It was really based on preclinical science showing that the molar ratio of donorubin to cytarabine may be very important. And in fact, the one to five molar ratio in this liposomal formulation is synergistic, and the liposome targets the marrow. So there is some preclinical data suggesting maybe this is an advantage. The phase three study was a perfect experiment. Lower doses of donorubin cytarabine in the liposomal formulation were compared to standard seven and three followed by consolidation with the two, and there was a survival benefit. So there's something there. Maybe we don't understand it completely, but Rajit, do you want to talk about some of the subsequent analyses that were presented? Yeah, so I think there, there was a couple of really interesting analyses that were presented at ASH this year, one of which looked at the specific uh, cohort of patients with AML-MRC, which certainly are not always the easiest patients to diagnose, uh, given that it is not always a uh, uh, necessity to have a, uh, a known MDS or CMML prior to having the ML, but it can be um, found from cytogenetic changes. And so uh, when looking at this subgroup, uh, as opposed to taking out the treatment-related AML patients, there was a benefit to these uh, AML MRC patients to the liposomal formulation that was uh, reported at this meeting. And again, the larger study had reported on the combination of uh, therapy-related AML and AML-MRC as one group. But now uh, the data here clearly shows that the AML-MRC derives benefit from this combination. Uh, one of the, I think, really interesting things that emerged was transplant. And certainly, given the poor natural history of secondary AML, we, we tried to consider transplant whenever possible as that's the only long-term curative strategy. Uh, and the question has uh, always remains, can you get a patient to transplant? Uh, and one of the interesting things to emerge from the meeting was data looking at transplant outcomes in patients who had received standard induction versus a liposomal formulation. And in fact, there did appear to be a benefit to those patients um, in terms of their post-transplant outcomes if they had received the liposomal formulation. And so the Potential implication of that is, are you getting a deeper response? Is this, are we seeing more MRD negative responses? That data was not presented here, but certainly is one of the implications. But I think that the, uh, it was a very striking finding that there may be a longer term benefit in terms of how these patients do if you're going to take them to transplant. Yeah. So at your institutions, how do you give liposomal donorism cytarabine? Is, I mean, it's a 90-minute infusion, day one, three, and five. I mean, th this could be done in an infusion center. Are we ready to do outpatient infusions for induction? 98% of the patients in the phase three trial got it as an inpatient. So we, we call it the purple drug. It's purple. It's got anthracycline red and I copper like blue. Color. It's a lovely color. I mean, yes, yeah. the purple drug. Uh, we still give it induction as an inpatient. We regard a newly diagnosed uh, leukemic patient as somebody who warrants an inpatient stay. I don't think it's trivial. Uh, you do get uh, aplasia, um, uh, and yes, it's not uh, anywhere near as toxic. The patients often sitting there in the corner reading the newspaper getting this drug. Their hair doesn't fall out, but there are toxicities. We tend to reserve the outpatient treatment for consolidation, which is actually very convenient. Patients come in quickly, get their consolidation. And while there is some neutropenia there, it's a lot less, it, it seems to be very quite well tolerated, at least in consolidation. So our approach is consolidation. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is another, you know, kind of similar HMA venetoclax di di discussion that we had, that although this is better tolerated, and I think overall safer than seven plus three, this is chemotherapy, this is induction therapy. And so I think for 100%, we're admitting these people, like you, Dr. Arba said, the experience of outpatient is anecdotal at best. And I know it's an insurance reimbursement issue in many places, but you know, we're admitting them, and, and the count recovery, uh, as was mentioned, is actually longer than seven plus three. It's 35 days versus 28. In spite of that, I think it may be mucositis. We don't know, but there seems to be a survival benefit. Even the eight-week mortality is lower. It's 10% versus 18%. So 
I think you have to monitor these people, do transfusions, give them antibiotics. They seem to tolerate it better and have better outcome, but it's not because this is low intensity therapy. Well, I think you'll survive yeah. better if your leukemia is gone yeah. at right. the completion yeah. of all of yeah. this awful eight get, weeks. Yeah. And I think that's probably that's where, where this drug is. is working. See, the strength of the data that was presented on allo transplant is that this was a randomized phase three study. And in fact, more patients were able to go on to get uh, a transplant, even patients over 70 mm -hmm. were able to go on to get a transplant and had, after uh, liposomal formulation, had better outcomes compared to seven and three. The difficulty that we will have with analyzing single center retrospective data is the selection bias. In that north side experience, similar numbers of patients went on to the transplant after seven and three and Ida flag, and yet the outcomes were were not as good with, with uh, seven and three, but there may have been some unmeasured covariates there.